A very warm welcome. Today we have with us Mr. Nikhil Paul, who is the Chief Technology and Information Officer at 6D Technology. A very warm welcome, sir. Thank you for joining at CX for TV. Uh, thank you, Urmi, and it is great to meet you guys again. Uh, yeah. Thank you, sir. So, you know, before we actually proceed further to the discussions that we have today in line, so I uh, would actually like to know from you how your journey has been so far in the industry. If you can share some insight with the audience. Yeah, so uh, last uh, 21 years, we've been focusing on the telecom product lines and primarily 6G Technologies has been focusing on uh, six areas. Uh, one is on the BSS transformation, which is digital transformation of BSS, uh, the digital enablement of M2M IoT uh, business, again, business transformations on that. We were also looking at the customer engagement and AI and analytics, which are required on the telecom sector. Uh, we are also looking on unified VAS platform and the mobile financial services platform. So being in my role, uh, my focus has been to build these product lines to enable this to the multiple teleco and the partners whom we work with for their multi-line of business, which is for B2C segments, B2B segments and B2, B2X segments. And that's how the journey has been. And today we have around 80 plus countries, 150 plus customers, happy customers whom we can proudly say we have done a lot of digital transformation and innovation to them with our products. It's uh, pretty wonderful. Uh, it's been a great journey throughout, indeed. So, you know, as you just mentioned, that uh, you have been doing a lot of digital transformation and innovation. So, you know, especially as a uh, as a CTO, being your role, uh, what strategies or approaches do you actually find most effective in aligning technology initiatives with business goals? So, being on the CTIO role, uh, one of the core focus has been for me over the last three years is to come with a technology acceleration strategy. I call it as TAS24 strategy. Uh, in this particular strategy, I would say every CTOs or CTIOs or CIOs of an organization will be doing that. Uh, so coming from the strategy which we have built in, I believe that it's a nine uh, pillar of a pyramid as a foundation which has to be done. So TAS24 was completely focusing. So any CTO has to focus on this strategy kind of. My strategy has to be focused on these nine foundations, which includes human factor, technology excellence, engineering excellence, operational efficiency, aligning the products what we build as per the industry standards, focus on the transformation strategies from engineering and technology excellence, focus on security and privacy of the data. Then also look at the data intelligence part because we all are looking towards AI and ML being enabling the mass data which is getting generated in these platforms. So the nine foundations of our pyramid which constitute to TAS24 is something which we focus on. So it's something which it's like a focus strategy for the next till 2024. Beyond that again we will have a new technology strategy which will define the roadmaps and the focus area and the vision which we need to achieve. Right. So you now, as you just mentioned, we are seeing so much of prominence in terms of artificial intelligence and machine learning. We'll definitely try to understand from you as well uh, what are the potential benefits around it. But uh, at the same time, we are seeing in today's era that the technology is rapidly evolving. So how do we exactly ensure that your te technical knowledge remains current and relevant? And how do you foster a culture of a continuous learning within your team? So because we come from the telecom product line and most of our customers and partners, which were the telecom operators itself, their DNA has to work was primarily to focus on the B2C segments because that's how every telecos evolved in the market. But over the last three to four years with 5G coming into picture like and new technology trends which is coming, we see telecos also changing their focus from B2C to B2B, B2B2X, uh, B2B2G kind of business segment. So the, the shift of the focus of our customers and partners also has been changing. Right. We are hearing about a lot of uh, cloud initiatives which are done. Uh, we are also in the journey of cloudification of our products. So we see 5G as a trend. We see uh, cloudification of the product as a strategy, which is every companies are focusing. We also see new cloud native architectures which are required to support this kind of a transformation. Focus has been on digital transformation for all our customers. 
So in this regards, uh, and also the data, like as I said, AI and ML is also a very important thing. So with this regard, it was important for us also to change very disruptively because I, I we always call ourselves as a challenger brand. So we need to have a very disruptive change. So from my perspective, it was important for us to focus on the technology excellence. How do we cloudify our products? And when we do cloudification, whether it's a right strategy to go with complete lift and shift or we transform in a step-by-step -step stage. So we choose the right technologies. We choose the right technology excellence programs, which was also part of our strategy exercise. And beyond all this, uh, it's also important that it's not just the technology changes. It's also important that the humans also get equipped to change that. So I have a concept or rather everybody follows, but we follow something like a one team approach where we bring in all the organizational and teams who has to contribute to this new culture of technology excellence, which was again with the foundations of Agile and DevOps. So I would say these are some of the steps which we have taken at the right time where humans has human factor has been given a lot of importance. One team approach, training the team, equipping the team with new skill set and also choosing the right technology, choosing the right steps to move towards cloud, cloudification and also adapting with the disruptive changes with the market trends like going and enabling 5G services, edge services. We talk about transformation strategies. So this is how we have been doing this journey and till now we've been successful and we are delivering value to our end customers at the end. Absolutely. I mean, uh, in today's time, adaptability to uh, such innovative technologies that are being uh, coming up is uh, very important. And you have actually mentioned that uh, your team is working towards it. And so, you know, uh, could you actually discuss on your perspective on the balance between this innovation and stability when, uh, act when it comes to implementing the new technologies or maybe the solutions within an organization's IT infrastructure? So, um, I keep it in two areas. One is every transformation which has to be done or digital journey which has to be done when you move from a legacy to a digital, you need to do a very careful decision because as a CTIO, your role is to play between the business and the technology. So I call we are like the bridging gap between these two areas. End of the day, you need to make sure there is a ROI, return of investment, for your end customer or partner because it's not that we just change the technology because there is a need. The need has to be driven by an ROI. So, Absolutely. yeah, so I keep it as two different areas. Uh, we keep our focus when we discuss with our customers and partners. Mm -hmm. So I maybe I take two examples. If, I, if we have a legacy customer and it's a brownfield operations, then one of the strategy what we see is we really evaluate is there a real ROI which you achieve by doing a complete transformation or we go step by step because these transformations can take time and it's also a huge investment from every partner and we call that as a one team approach. So it may be not required, maybe a full cloudification is required. So we go step by step, we choose the right technologies and then we transform that. There are areas where we call it as greenfield, where we are starting everything as new, where this approach can be adapted in a very disruptive way. So we have successes that way where we have done greenfield transformation, uh, going greenfield of a customer or a partner into this kind of a journey very quickly, even the same with a brownfield. So I would call the balance has to be maintained between innovation and stability of the business. And beyond just these two words, I would say also the ROI, which also has to be taken into the consideration because we are the key decision makers who will derive this. Right. And ROI remains the must when you are adapting to such technology, yeah. especially in terms of uh, the organization's benefit. So, you know, when we are actually discussing about uh, technology or digital transformation, one thing that remains primary in today's era is uh, cybersecurity. So what proactive measures and strategies do you implement to ensure the security of your organization's IT system as well as its data? So uh, I would say every product company from the time we have started, security has been a core factor. So as I said, every year in our strategy, it's not that security was not there. Uh, it is one of the core foundation of any product 
or any deployments which we do. Yes, cyber security has been the new wow request in the market and definitely product companies like us because we are talking about now going to cloudification, uh, completely taking the products to cloud where our customers and partners are also going to cloud. We're also, also talking about opening it digitally where a lot of partner ecosystems will come, not just the teleco in the market. So cybersecurity is one of the core focus, but it is something which we've been practicing. Yes. So what we have done as an organization, we have identified a team who focus on the cybersecurity areas. Uh, there is very strict audit being done. We have that part of our uh, every release strategy, roadmap strategy. And there is a dedicated team who focus on these areas. So we do um, three qu every quarterly audits. We do the learning. We also set it up as a team along with our operators as well or with our customers and partners as well. So these are some key measures what we do and uh, not just the cyber security area, but also on the data governance and the data security part. Because that also comes as a key play because most of our customer data are to be private, maintain the confidentiality and the security. So we take care of not just the cyber security, but also the data security and governance. How do you exactly approach, uh, what's ex exactly your approach in terms of data governance, uh, data quality and deriving actionable insights uh, from the data? So uh, we believe as because we are part of the communication area of any ecosystem in our, I would say, in our complete um, social economy, right? Because Teleco carries the bearer as, act as a bearer channel for all the communication. So data is a very critical part. We make sure data governance and data security is maintained. So there are some industry standards what we follow. Uh, like if you, if, you, if you know about GDPR, these kind of regulatory guidelines are there. The regulatory guidelines of the country is there. These are the some things which we follow very strictly and also there are uh, data governance with respect to privacy of the uh, record, with respect to masking of the informations, what information has to be shared. So all these kind of regulatory guidelines are maintained and we also do something like a governance exercise which is also part of the ecosystem or the strategy what we have created. So where there is a team who will run through the data governance and also with respect to our products what we have. Now, the next thing is aligning to the standards itself will make sure that these guidelines are followed. Uh, so when we talk about European deployment, GDPR plays a very important role. When we go to cloud, there is cloud strategy, which we closely work with the hyperscalers in the market where we make sure these uh, cloud security and the data security guidelines are followed by them. And we also do the vulnerability tests. We do penetration tests. We make sure it is audited by external agencies so that governance requirements are met. Right. So, you know, as you were mentioning about uh, cloudification and how uh, pivotal uh, it has become uh, for the organizations to transform themselves. So, uh, you know, how is your approach to cloud adoption? Uh, uh, how has cloud adoption evolved and what con considerations do you keep in mind uh, when it uh, comes to migrating or integrating the systems into the cloud. So uh, this is where because cloudification has been the new uh, strategy or the new focus by every organization. Definitely we see value. At the same time, as I said, uh, everything comes with a cost. So ROI is something which we definitely put into the table first when we decide about cloudification or a cloudification of an operator itself. So as an organization, all our products today, because we also see values being created by moving the products to cloud. We see ROIs being better, but I won't say quote it for every case because it also depends uh, based on the requirements, based on the countries where you operate, based on the customers and the partners whom you operate, because some customers and partners may not be ready to go to cloud because of the data security requirements. So they would like to keep it on-prem on their data center itself, but on a cloud native architecture. So as I said, ROI has a very key play. So when we have seen our product lines, we have done a careful decision, which products has to be lift and shift to the cloud, what has to transform step by step. And this is something which we have defined over the strategy approach. So today I can proudly say all our products are cloud native and on the cloud. 
बट इट मे नॉट बी कम्प्लीटली एज ए क्लाउड सैस सर्विस इट मे बी ए क्लाउड नेटिव आर्किटेक्चर विच कैन बी ऑन प्रेम और इट कैन बी ऑन ए पब्लिक क्लाउड एंड एज आई सेड इट इज नॉट ए सिंगल कंपनी स्ट्रैटेजी और एज एन ऑर्गेनाइजेशनल स्ट्रैटेजी एज एन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन वी आर क्लाउड रेडी एंड वी आर क्लाउडिफाइड बट इट ऑल्सो नीड्स एज ए वन टीम अप्रोच आई सेट वेर वी हैव टू सिट अक्रॉस विद द पार्टनर्स एंड द कस्टमर्स चूज देयर बिजनेस स्ट्रैटेजी ओवर द नेक्स्ट फाइव ईयर्स एंड देन डिसाइड क्लाउडिफिकेशन इज द राइट स्ट्रैटेजी फॉर दम so uh, all right so in terms of uh, the technologies that we were actually talking about and being uh, the buzz right now uh, artificial intelligence and uh, machine learning are gaining so much of prominence across the industries so how do you actually envision the integration of uh, ai and ml technologies into your organization's operation and uh, what potential benefits do you see uh, from it so ai ops and ml ops is something uh, which we focus very aggressively i would say we are more like a disruptor and a challenger in the market on okay. yeah with our products in ai ops and ml uh why do we do that uh, is because if i keep it in a simple line uh with respect to the new technology evolution which is happening with 5g coming in network uh, edge coming in network and even with the data usage and the consumption by the end users which is not just b2c today we are also talking about enterprise segments like other industry verticals coming and connecting to the telcos uh, the b2b2x model of bringing digital partners also to the ecosystem a lot of data has been created and everybody wants to monetize this data everybody wants to monetize with respect to the data security being put into picture it's not that data is open to everybody but we need to put data security guidelines but monetization is doing a very key play and every teleco wants to become like a digital operator they don't want to be called anymore as a legacy they also want to be called as a digital operator so in this regard what we do like all these areas has to be improvised because um, ai and ml ops will give us the inputs to analyze these data and to come up with models so just for an example like most of our applications or products what we do today we do a lot of operational efficiencies using bots so bots rely on the data which is not fed by humans but which is fed by ai models or ml models and we operate that models on a cloud it is like it can be on a aws ml ops cloud or it can be an on prem capability so one of the example is enabling operational efficiency with bots using ai which we focus a lot on other thing what you could see is more of conversational ai like you talk you go to a chatbot you start interacting a lot of cost has been reduced right so in teleco market these are the areas where we really focus on or at least to our partners and we also focus on the generative ai because that is also something which is new in the market where we integrate and we understand the segments from the end users and help them with the ai capability so that the way the data has been created to run the business is enabled so we focus on all these areas and also the legacy or the digital areas of ai where we focus on customer engagement customer experience revenue upliftment so all these areas are something which we use ai and ml very aggressively and i start as i started in the beginning we go with a lot of challenger and disruption to the market with these models okay that's great so you uh, know i lastly in one thing we would actually like to understand from you that in your opinion uh, what are the uh, uh, future trends and directions to anticipate in the field of technology and how do you exactly think that these trends might impact the uh, telecom market so um, we be as because we are a, we are a partner to many of the the industry alliances like tm forum gsma we participate in a lot of conference so we see the uptake of the market or and when we at least talk to our customers and partners we all know 5g is going to create a big impact in the market so yes. it's not yeah it's not about just the b2c customers which we talk we are talking about other industry verticals also coming into the play we are talking about network being used for industry automations mm. uh for cloud connectivities for connected cars 
or maybe for factory automations, oil and gas, mining, or small edge networks or private networks for campuses, edge networks. So we see all these evolving into an ecosystem where we would see teleco becoming a carrier and becoming a digital enabler, providing these kind of capabilities so that we see a lot of new digital ecosystems being generated. Like when we talk about maybe a factory automation, we see we are talking about a small scale operator running within a factory and which is enabled as an edge by an operator, right? So all these need a, a lot of focus from product companies like us and even from the industry as well to enable this as very smooth and seamless uh, with the technology disruption, right? So that is something which we see as a new market trend which is coming. We would see a lot of digital play coming into the ecosystem with these new ecosystem partners who were never into these ecosystems before. So that is one area which we see as things which are going to grow very rapidly. The other part, as you said, like as we all discussed, AI uh, ops and ML ops, which is going to help the operational excellency and also focusing on the revenue enhancement. Because what we see when all these ecosystem partners coming into play, the kind of data which gets generated is going to be huge and it is massive data. And everybody wants to use this data to monetize, keeping the guidelines and the security in picture. So we see a lot of AI ops getting evolved. We have very interesting case studies where AI ops has been used for improving the operational efficiency of an opco. We have seen many telecos getting benefited. At least we could see on their uh, EBITAs, we could see on the kind of cost which they were investing has been reduced by improving just the operational efficiency with AI ops. We also believe these AI ops and ML ops can be used with generative AI, conversational AI, a lot to improve the customer experience itself, the end customer experience. So I would say these are the three areas or one is like with the new disruption to the market with 5G, Edge, private networks coming into play. We are talking about digital journeys of these opcos moving or the telecom operators moving from legacy to digital partners. They don't want to be anymore like a legacy operator. And the sec which was the second area. Third area is on the data which gets generated, monetizing this data and also enabling the operational efficiencies using AI ops and ML. So these are the three areas which we would say which will have a huge disruption coming in the market over the next one to two years. And focus from us also is to grow in these areas because that is where we are also looking our products to be more matured and to become like a challenger brand. All right. So uh, that's very nice. And uh, it was great interacting with you. And uh, you have shared some valuable insight around the industry. Uh, thank you for joining uh, at Sexo TV and sharing your knowledge with us. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For more updates from CXO TV, please like and subscribe to our channel.